I sincerely wish I could be with you today in Helsinki, but uh, my duties require my presence in Paris. But at least I have this opportunity to say a few words because crowd disruption, the topic of uh, your agenda today, is unquestionably one of the most significant features of the digital transformation currently sweeping the economy and society. There are obviously many examples of the power of the crowd, so I'd like to confine my remarks to two of its most striking aspects. The first one is that crowdfunding and crowd lending are putting serious pressure on the legacy banking system. And this is not just my personal opinion. In July, Goldman Sachs estimated that US banks could lose as much as 20% of their share of the credit market to these uh, rising challengers. And a similar trend is visible in France. With new legislation in place to foster crowdfunding, a total of 25.4 million euros in equity, 38 million euros in donations, and 88 million debt financing were raised in 2014, for example, over 1 billion French people used crowdfunding in one way or another last year, and this is a growing trend. At the same time, and this is my second point, the power of collaboration and the impact of the crowd are compelling us to change our entire way of creating, of producing and sharing. Developments like Wikipedia, OpenStreetMap, and Wikispeed all bear witness to how powerful people can be when they do things together. Moreover, the trend is spreading to every sphere of activity, local and national politics included. How can anyone today imagine implementing, for example, an urban renewal program without first consulting with citizens? When it comes down to it, the transformations in progress challenge us to re-examine the way we engage in politics. They push us to be more creative. Let me give you one example from my own current concerns as the French Minister of State for Digital Affairs. Before the year's end, I will be submitting a bill to Parliament with the aim of giving France a new digital legal framework. The bill itself is the outcome of a major year-long digital consultation process conducted online and in real life. The key value of our approach is that we reached out beyond the usual lobby groups to get people involved who are not ordinarily consulted when bills are being drafted. So that was the first stage, and it is by no means the last. Even before submitting the bill to Parliament, we will be posting a sort of wiki online that outlines the bill's 35 articles as they currently stand. That way, stakeholders and other citizens can examine the articles and even provide feedback or legal suggestions they may have. This is the very first initiative of its kind in France, maybe also in Europe. And I strongly encourage all stakeholders in Europe's digital society gathered today in Helsinki to participate in our crowdsourcing drive as soon as the bill is posted online in September. One last point before I conclude, there's nothing marginal or minor about the new practices we're discussing. In fact, they're contributing to the gradual emergence of a new type of capitalism based on collaboration, what Jeremy Rifkin has termed the zero marginal cost society. France has organizations that are at the forefront of today's sharing economy, collaborative economy, for example, we share a recognized think tank in that sector, and BlaBlaCar, a startup that points the way towards the crowdsourced transport mobility of tomorrow. I will soon be unveiling the French government's national strategy for supporting the collaborative economy and its key growth drivers. 
But I must say, as a former parliamentary representative of the French people living in Northern Europe, including in Finland, and as someone who has lived for many years outside of France, I can assure you that the French participants in the collaborative economy are European above all, and they see themselves quite naturally as such. The market they're addressing is Europe, and they work with people from they work with people from across the continent. So I firmly believe that Europe has both a vital role to play here and has all the prerequisites for taking full advantage of the fabulous opportunities that the collaborative economy is creating. So our job is to ensure that Europe will be and will remain the epicenter of that economy and the homeland of crowd disruption. On that note, I hope that your discussions will be rewarding. I look forward to seeing you soon at uh, maybe the second event taking place in Munich and who knows, maybe at a third one in France uh, soon. Thank you for listening and enjoy uh, the summit. Thank you.